Imagine this, you're 19 years old and you've just become Ireland's youngest female professional boxer. You've just won WBC, WBF and WIBA titles and have an undefeated record of 5-0. Your next move will surprise the public and those around you because you decide to take a step back from the sport. And this is exactly what Caitlin Freeland bravely did in 2021. Although she wasn't fighting inside the ring, her fighting spirit was required to overcome a different, more personal challenge than boxing itself. It's been two years since then, and the smiling assassin says she is more than ready to make her return to the ring. Whether or not the comeback will be a success is to be determined, but what we know for sure is that when Caitlin steps into that ring again, we'll be seeing a completely different fighter. And as she says, a happy fighter is a dangerous fighter. This is a story about self-discovery, overcoming bullying, resilience, and knowing when to take a step back from your sport to prioritize your mental health. Let's get into it. Caitlin, how are you doing? Good, thank you very much for having me. Yeah, thanks for being here. We are super excited to have you in studio with us and really excited to hear your story. So what we're going to be doing is you brought some photos with you. So what we're going to do is... We're going to be sharing those photos and then you're going to be sharing your story with us. So for those of you who are listening to this episode on Spotify, we recommend you head over to our YouTube channel so that you can actually see the photos that Caitlin has brought with us. So we'll dive right into it. Let's get into the first one. So Caitlin, <laughs> what is the story behind this photo? So in this photo, this would have been kind of my first boxing tournament ever. Um, the little one on the left, that is me. <laughs> So that day was actually St. Patrick's Day and my mom said I have to go and dance with the local dance team and I think I cried for about three or four hours until they said okay fine you can go with the boxing club because my dad and my brothers and all my cousins and everything were in the boxing Mm. I was like no that's so much cooler so I ended up you can see all my really long hair as well Um, you know I ended up getting my own way as you can see (laughs) Uh, the photo with the up at the top on the right that is actually with my dad Mm -hmm. Uh, you can see his lovely green tracksuit yeah Yeah, so that was St. Patrick's Day as well and then the bottom one is my very first fight Uh, the only person we could get to fight with was actually a boy so I had to have my head guard on before I got into the ring because boys won't box girls apparently Mm -hmm. (laughs) especially at that age (laughs) and the guy actually in the middle is my brother Darren Mm -hmm. Uh, he lives in Canada now at the moment and he's doing really well growing up did you play any other sports or was it always boxing because I know you come from a boxing family so I think I done everything everything you can think of I tried everything and just I hated it I couldn't stick at anything Um, I was really good bench warmer for Gaelic because I have two left feet and if I kicked the ball forward it would go behind me so <laughs> I done dancing I done Irish dancing I'd, anything you can think of I've done and just didn't think I could stick at that I loved was boxing okay yeah, yeah. and your two brothers they also box as well they yeah. do yeah so my dad my two brothers my granddad actually <laughs> everyone in the family boxed my mom and my sister are coaches now as well so oh wow yeah, so it's okay. it's the whole family my niece yeah. and nephew actually box as well wow so full-on yeah. family affair yeah, yeah no no break <laughs> Yeah, and actually what I love about that one photo with you, that your first, like, official yeah. official yeah. fight was against a boy. Like, um, yeah. So how old were you there as well? Oh, I think I was about six, I think okay. six or seven or something like that, yeah. Mm. But when I actually wanted to start boxing, my dad wouldn't let me mm. because females into that type of sport was always frowned upon. Yeah. And my dad was one of those big macho men. was like, no, girls aren't allowed to box. So I went above him to the guy that actually owned the boxing like keep in mind I'm only a six-year-old and this guy was like yeah Caitlin of course you're more than welcome like my mom used to have to hide me somewhere in the house when my dad was leaving boxing and she had to distract me because otherwise I'd cry until he came home because I wanted to go (laughs) with him like I was just jealous I think I wanted to go what the boys were doing so but yeah no it was it's really good that my whole family do it so yeah and it's amazing the impact that it had on you like from such a young age yeah as a kid you were like no I actually want to I want to be there boxing yeah no I just I always loved it yeah that's super amazing and growing up who would you say were your role models I I have to say my dad Mm. yeah my dad I always looked up to and he got me to where I am today but of course as every female and even female boxer in Ireland Katie Taylor of course (laughs) I have to say Katie Taylor so but yeah no both of them wouldn't be where I am without either of them to be honest Mm. like how exactly did your dad come around to the idea of you boxing because you mentioned that he was 
against it. <laughs> you were the baby of the family, <laughs> all of these things. You were a girl. So, yeah, how did you come around to the idea? Persistent and constantly annoying you know. him. Mm. <laughs> it was literally every time he left out the door oh where are you going I'll come even if he was going to the shop or going to work I'd be like yeah I'll come with you and he just kind of just eventually just gave in and he was like oh she actually has a bit of a talent like I think he started to slowly see it and obviously after a few years a few more girls start coming into the gym and I think I think he just had to <laughs> to be yeah. honest I'm very stubborn so he just had to give in to me otherwise I would have been the biggest pain in his whole life <laughs> so <laughs> yeah and even like do you remember as well i mean you were like six with that first fight that you did um against that bo- that little boy <laughs> um but like do you remember his reaction when you won or did you win actually sorry i don't even know if we touched yeah, on that yeah so when we're when you're that young i think everyone wins to be honest uh, yes. fair, yeah plus it would have been unfair on him because he actually did start crying i know that sounds so bad <sighs> but because i remember it so clearly I think it was a bit of a mismatch, to be honest, <laughs> on his behalf. Because he tried getting out through the ropes, halfway through the fight. And mm. you could see that was in the photograph. My brother Darren was refereeing. Mm. So he was like, you're okay, you're okay. Come on, keep coming. And I can actually, I remember so clearly, like, the boxing shorts I had on. Like, they went from both my brothers to me. And then I remember the boots. I was only telling someone the other day about these boxing boots. They were the best things ever. I, I loved them. I still have them at home. They were pink boxing boots. And I couldn't tie my laces at that age because I was so young. They had zips on the side. And we're so cool. I think the pink box boots could have given it away to him, to be completely honest. Yeah. But, <laughs> but yeah, no, it was a really... It's just... It's crazy to even just think back on it, like how things have changed. Yeah. And how many girls are in the sport now. And it's just... Mm-hmm. It's really amazing to see. Yeah. I'm sure that guy as well. I don't know if you have contact with him. Yeah. But I'm sure, like, that could be, like, his new thing. Like, guys, I box Caitlin yeah. Keelan. Like, <laughs> I actually, I only saw him, I think, oh, God, about a year ago in the actual, the old club. that was Ryston Boxing Club in Newbridge that we used to be in. Um, his name is actually Luke. It's yes, hi, Luke. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, in general, he was like, Ken, do you remember our first fight? And I was like, yeah, I kind of keep posting the photo as well because I actually have another photo on my Instagram of his head right back like that and his <laughs> arms are just up in the air and it's just, it's even to look at it, it's, it's so funny because look where I came from and like where I am now. It's yeah. just, it's crazy. So we'll move on to the next photo. Which is this one. So what's the story behind this photo? So this was my last fight. It was in Luxembourg. Um, that's the guy on the left is actually my boyfriend, Shane. Mm. And the guy, you can kind of see him. That's my dad on the right. That's when I just came out of the ring and we were heading back into the changing rooms. And just the whole photo, just anytime I look at it, I just smile instantly. It just makes me so happy. Mm. Just, just a really nice photo and just makes me really happy. Yeah. And okay, so what's... Th- the story behind the smiling assassin so how did you get this name <laughs> so my uncle from australia kit actually gave me the name um i think i was only about 10 or 11 when he actually gave it to me because anyone that meets me i'm always smiling always laughing and yet when i get into a boxing ring i will punch someone no matter what <laughs> as you would say i'd kill them like an assassin oh, so he goes okay. you're like a smiling assassin so that kind of just stuck everyone kind of started calling me the smiling assassin and stuff like that and then when I turned over a pro, I put up on my Instagram any ideas for nicknames because every kind of pro has a nickname. Like, mm. So a lot of people actually came back and said, oh, I heard you're called a smiling assassin. That's cool. Go with that. Or So it stuck from day one. So. Wow. Yeah. Okay. What's so cool that it was like sort of given from like when yeah, you were a exactly. kid as well. <laughs> I was actually also wanted to touch on if, if you're comfortable sharing it yeah. with with us as well so in, a, in an interview a few years ago you mentioned that you were bullied through secondary school as well yeah. um so how did this affect you also as a person so yeah I was badly bullied I think from I'd say sixth class up until third or fourth year I actually left school at the beginning of fifth year because that's how bad it got Um, I was in a really bad place I couldn't leave the house because my anxiety was so bad but the only thing that actually got me through all that was my sport and training and my boxing and things like that. Because that was my escape. Mm. I could go to the gym, punch a bag, you'd feel better. Um, I was bullied by a group of girls that I used to be really good friends with for a long, long time. And it was just constantly excluding, making names up, stuff like that. And just it really put me into a really bad, deep hole. And to be completely honest, I was quite suicidal over all of it. Mm. That's where I was actually saved by boxing. Wow. Okay, thank you so much for, no, for thank sharing you. that. Yeah. And I can imagine as well, I mean, for any athlete or any person, like you need those people in your corner as well. So yeah. to have people come and be against you, 
um, especially as you were moving and progressing in your career mm. um, that must have been very tough yeah no it was it was quite tough and if you don't have someone to support you or around you as well you just feel like you're constantly alone whereas I was quite lucky I had my mom and my dad and my sister helped me through an awful lot of it as well mm. I'd be completely lost without all of them yeah yeah we'll actually then move on to the next photo so what's the story behind this one so this is basically my family <laughs> so you have my best friend Kaylee you have my sister which is actually crying in the photo another girl that I'm friends with Kuiva and then my cousin Cassie this was after my debut I literally only came out of the ring and the first thing I ran to was to my sister Lisa mm -hmm. And everyone just kind of grabbed me and was around me. And just even just looking at the photo, you just feel so warm. And like yeah. everyone's faces, they're, they're proud. And yeah, mm. no, it's, it's really nice. Yeah. And I also like seeing, looking at this photo as well, it just makes me think of, like I just mentioned now as well, like every athlete, like I think especially in individual sports, people tend to just focus on the athlete. And yeah. you can often forget about the support system that's behind that. Oh, athlete 100%. As well. Like my support system is so important to me mm. like at the moment I have my dad I have Shane I have a new coach and manager and everything and it's just it's so different now com to compared to what it was years ago I just everyone just feels like they're there for me which is really really nice because mm. they do say boxing is the loneliest sport in the world mm. if you do not have the right team around you it definitely is so yeah. I, I'm quite lucky with who I have now around me yeah and just going back to that photo as well, so how old were you when you went to end pro? Uh, I was, I think I only turned 18 or I was mm. 18 a few months or something like that. But yeah, yeah so quite young for a pro. Very young. <laughs> <laughs> like most pros don't turn over until they're about 30. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. making that decision as well, it's... Um, you were still a teenager actually yeah. you were legally an adult yeah. but like <laughs> but still like it's you it's a very big decision yeah yeah no it is and I'm, I'm very stubborn mm. <laughs> if I think about something and I really really want it I won't stop until I actually do get it or achieve it so yeah I yeah I'm quite stubborn in that sense <laughs> <laughs> nothing wrong with that <laughs> so why did you decide to go pro at such a young age as well I was kind of, I was a little bit fed up with amateur boxing, to be honest. Um, my last fight in amateur, we thought I won the fight and it was just, it was a really big upset. It was just, I just started to hate the sport, to be honest. I just needed a break. It was either turn professional or stop boxing altogether. Mm. And I didn't want to stop boxing. Yeah. So I decided, right, I'll turn professional. Why not? <laughs> yeah. What else do I have to lose? So I actually, I had all my forms and everything signed and sent to the Boxing Union of Ireland before I told my mum and dad. Okay. And I got my license back saying, yeah, you're accepted as a pro. And then I told them. Okay. <laughs> I think I had like two weeks notice about my debut as well. Oh. So it was kind of just all happened really quick. Yeah. yeah. And oh. do you think if you had like done that whole process the other way around, your parents might have been a bit hesitant? Oh, yeah. My mom wouldn't have wanted me to turn pro at all. Just mm. I think it's, there's a lot more risk. You don't have head guard, you have lighter gloves. And then again, I'm, I, I'm the baby of the family. So, oh, okay. yeah. And then going on to becoming a world champion, winning WBC, WBF and the WIBA titles in Germany. How did it feel to become the youngest ever professional Irish boxer to do this? It was it was three years ago and it still doesn't feel real. Yeah. Like, honest to God, it's just... It was one of the most proudest nights of my life. I even thinking about it still, I get so emotional thinking about it. And like my dad has three belts up in the local boxing club and the kids run over and look at them and they're like, oh, I'm going to get one of them one day. And I just get so up, like so not upset, like happy tears. Like, mm -hmm. oh, it's just, that's, they're mine. Like I, I done that. And just like growing up, I never had that kind of self-confidence or pride within myself. And now I do, like I proved to everyone, everyone expected me to go over there and lose. Because I was going to the girl's local town. She was the biggest hot shot coming up from where she was from. Like her coach put on the whole show for her to win these belts. And I ended up stopping her. Mm. Like no one expected that. Which it's even talking about now. It's still it's just it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. And even like just going back to that fight as well. Like how, were you, how did you feel going into it? Calm. Like strangely you know, like before I walked out to the ring. Myself and the guy that was cut. Like my cut man he was doing my raps. My team around me we were singing singing and dancing I had music blaring and laughing and joking like just I think it's just you get into this mindset before a fight everything just feels right you just you know you've done the hard work you're meant to be where you're where you are and just you feel happy and calm and just a little bit excited but not too much because this is where you're, you're meant to be there that's where mm -hmm. I was meant to be 
Yeah. So. Oh, that's great. We'll move on to the next photo now. So obviously there's you with your belts, but yeah. you can explain this photo. <laughs> yeah, so this was just after I won the belts. Um, the, we took the photo to send to my mom because my mom couldn't make it over that day because it was, I think there was only about 30 people in the whole hall because it was during COVID and lockdown mm-hmm. and stuff. And you could hear everything, anything. You could hear a pin drop. That's how little there was there. So this photo was actually taken to send home to my mum. And then she rang me crying. You can see I was actually crying in the photo. Mm. I have a lovely little bump on my head <laughs> in it too. That was from a headbutt. <laughs> and probably my fault. <laughs> but yeah, no, so that's, they're my belts that are in the photo. And I got a really cool t-shirt, which I still haven't got to wear, like to wear because my mum stole it. She, yeah. she <laughs> said she's going to put it in a frame and that was three years ago. So I'm still waiting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Do you know where the t-shirt is, though? Yeah, she has it up hanging on a on a, uh, a hanger in the spare room. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Just needs to be <laughs> framed. It's like a little shrine. Like, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah. And even that, like, um, I can imagine that uh, COVID was just weird for yeah. everyone. Um, so, yeah, even just, like, prepping for, for that fight. Um, did you have any challenges leading up to it? anything that could go wrong went wrong for the start of that fight like the official date that we had it was cancelled I think it was cancelled once or twice and then we actually got the date and we we're like okay it's, it's going to happen it'll happen and um, obviously we had to get covid tests thought my brain was going to fall out at one stage with a few of them like there were so many yeah. <laughs> they were horrible just everything just wanted to go wrong but just the team that I had said relax stay calm stay positive it will happen so mm. Like I'm very easy going in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> I just kind of go with the flow. If something yeah. wants to happen, it will. So mm. yeah. yeah, it's a great attitude to have. Fast forward to 2021. So you were in and out of the ring. You had to undergo surgery as well. Yeah. Um, and with that being said as well, you also posted on social media about going through a bit of a rough time and taking a step back yeah. um, from competing just to get some help and everything. Um, So if you're comfortable sharing, could you maybe just share a bit more about that time in your life? Yes. So obviously when I won my titles, I was on such a big high and then I was coming down on the low, but I had another fight soon after that, which was my last fight was Luxembourg in February, 2021. So that was my last fight. And obviously you're on a big high again. You, we were still in lockdown. So I came home, I started going on a bit of a low. Obviously I couldn't celebrate my titles or my fights or anything like that. It was just me a takeaway a pizza something like that and just I didn't feel like I achieved it if that makes sense Mm. just everything wanted to just put me down and just I felt bad yeah the odd people like trolls online saying oh you don't deserve this and stuff like that and just I think it's because obviously again because of lockdown the way it happened you couldn't go and speak to someone properly everything was over the phone Mm. whereas I didn't feel like I was venting enough to someone if I was speaking over the phone so I decided myself look I had an injury I had to take a bit of time off so I actually ended up taking three years off best decision I ever made mm. I'm I'm back now and I want to be back like mm. like I said like I hated boxing after that because I didn't get to celebrate anything mm. I know it's not about the celebrations and stuff like that but if you achieve something so big you want someone else to kind of celebrated with you like here look look my family look what I got look what I won no one could like you'd have my immediate family came and looked at the belts got a photo that was it Mm. like if you see other big pro fighters they have belts they have not parties like I'm not interested in parties and stuff like that but like they celebrated they had people looking at them like they were going around to different local clubs and I didn't get to do any of that which Mm. I was so excited to bring in my belts to different boxing clubs and saying here kids look Mm. this is what you can achieve and I didn't get to do any of that. And by the time I did, everyone forgot about it. Mm. So, but I just, I decided to take the time off and that's what I needed to do. Mm. So, yeah. So it's actually so cool that you say mm. that because so for you, you felt it was the wise thing to mm. almost continue with your joy for the sport was to actually step out of the sport yeah. and just take some time to compose yourself again. And mm. knowing that, okay, when I do go back, that love and passion will still be there. Yeah, no, if I didn't take time away, I I would never have went back. Mm. Like, I, I would have quit boxing, would have probably went down a bad path, to be honest. Mm. Just, I decided myself, and my boyfriend said with me, look, I, no matter what you decide, I will support you. Mm. So we sat down, sat down with my family, and I was like, look, I need to take time away. Everyone was like, oh my God, she's quitting boxing, what's she going to do? Whereas 
I wanted to be known as Caitlin Phelan, mm. not just, oh, she's the girl that boxes. Yeah. Like, and now people know, okay, she actually is a human being as well, mm. which is kind of nice to know. But I needed that time away, and I'm, I'm really, really glad I did. And if anyone ever is struggling with something, don't just push yourself to do it. Obviously, there is a certain time you need to step back and say, okay, I need to take a break here. I need for my head, physically, everything, I just need my time. Mm. And, and you needed to find yourself again oh yeah, yeah and I, I definitely did I found myself and I can gladly say I'm happy mm. like and to do say a happy fighter is a dangerous fighter so yeah <laughs> yeah no and for those of you who are watching like I can even <laughs> feel like the excitement within you and yeah. just yeah the confidence as well it's, it's really <laughs> great yeah so yeah I'm getting goosebumps just yeah how far <laughs> you've come it's, it's really thank amazing you. um and yeah you should be really proud of yourself oh, no, thank you well. very much that really means a lot so yeah. what were the tools that helped you get back into boxing so i was actually working with a guy called alan heary he's a sports psychologist i was working with him for a long time when i was boxing and when i took the time away i kind of i gave him a call i was like look alan I'm, I'm really struggling i don't know what to do i don't know who to talk to and he gave me these different tools like meditation was a big one for me mm. but gratitude it's like something i do every morning is five things i'm grateful for and that's a big, big thing that's actually helping me at the moment. Say, even if throughout the day, I'd be like, oh, I'm really struggling. I don't know what to do. I'd be like, right, what am I grateful for? 90% of the time, it's the dog and the cat. And Shane, he'll kill me if I don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> but even just little things like that, that I'm like, right, I'm doing it for that. I'm doing it for this. I'm so proud of these. Just little things like that. And he gave me all these tools when I was struggling at that time. And there was one thing that he said to me. He goes, close your eyes. Imagine that you have all these bad thoughts in your head. You're on a beach and you have a big black bag. Put them all into the black bag. Now imagine a balloon. Tie the balloon around it, let it float away. And now if I, every now and again, we like going to the beach just for a walk with the dogs and stuff like that. And I'm like, right, if, if I'm having a bad day, I'll go to the beach. Like I'll actually go there and picture that it's floating away and everything disappears. Mm. So that's kind of one big thing that he helped me with. And then again, ice baths. <laughs> like I know I brought it up already, but... Like the dopamine hit you get when you're out of an ice bath. I know you like I cry and I hate it when I get into it, but as soon as I get out, just all you can think about is, Oh my god, I'm so cold. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a big thing that helps as well. So Yeah. And also like during that um time when you were when you were taking a break as well, were you still training or was it like no boxing at all? No boxing, no training. For I'd say about a year and a half. Yeah, and and a then half. I started back I was actually started back doing CrossFit. Okay. I was doing a good bit of CrossFit and myself and Shane were doing CrossFit. We were just in the boxing club doing, doing it ourselves and stuff like that. And that kind of got me back into, right, I'm getting fit now again. Mm. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll do a bit of boxing today. Like I got my gloves out and that's kind of where it started from. And then again, went from punching the bag to me and Shane will get into the ring and do a little bit of sparring. And I taught him how to box and... <laughs> yeah <laughs> he doesn't want me to bring this up but yeah it's it's fun sparring him <laughs> he goes oh my god you hit me is my nose okay am i bleeding i was like no shane you're not you're fine <laughs> i'm sure it's only fun for you maybe he's just trying to be a good boyfriend yeah, yeah. <laughs> he loves it when we're out of the ring uh, yes, <laughs> yeah. yes but yeah no it's it's just like it started at one thing and then i was like oh i'll try this now next and then I decided to text Daniel Anderson. He's the guy in Belfast, new coach. And I was like, hey, would you prefer a bit of a pad session? And it was only a couple of weeks ago, I think about, I don't know, I'd say about two months ago, I said, yeah, look, I'll head up. Two and a half hours of a drive up, <laughs> but so worth it. Mm. As soon as I stepped into that gym, the guys made me feel so welcome. And I, that's what I was missing, I think. Just I felt so welcome. I felt like I had those people around me that are doing the same thing. And the coach was just like, Caitlin, look, you have a really good talent why don't you come to me? He goes, we'll figure something out. I know it's a bit of a trek up and down, but we'll figure it out. We'll do what suits you. I'll send you programs. And yeah, no, that's, that's where I am now. Mm -hmm. so. But now taking a step back and taking that time to just find yourself again, what would you say has now become your biggest motivation for boxing? My family. Mm. Like... I want to have a good life for myself and my boyfriend and my dog, my cat, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> they love too much toys. So, yeah, no, I want to I want to be successful for myself. I want to be able to sit down in the evenings and say, yeah, I can do this. Like, I don't want to have the struggles of where am I going to get my next paycheck from? Obviously, if you're on the Irish team, you're going to have grants coming in from Sport Ireland and stuff like that, which it's absolutely fantastic for the athletes to get. But you don't get that for a professional. Mm. Like 
you don't have money coming in unless you have someone say look here take this bit of money i'll give you this weekly or this monthly or for a fight but like people need to understand athletes need money like this is our job it's a job that you do not get paid for Mm. like i run my own business at the moment so if i don't work i don't have money coming in so that's why kind of I need to unbox I need to get sponsors. Everything like that has to kind of come all at once. And sometimes you want to just sit down and say, oh, I don't want to do it. I give up. That's it. Whereas you kind of have that person beside you saying, it's okay, relax, calm down. You can do it. Mm. So so what would you say is next on the cards for you? Is there, What's the next fight that's coming up? So we actually, we have a potential fight date in mind. Mm. Um, it'll be in the new year. So we're hoping to kind of, get up and running get one or two more fights hopefully in dublin somewhere in ireland hopefully please god mm-hmm. <laughs> i don't want to travel again that far mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah no hopefully we'll have one or two fights soon enough um i have a new team around me so at the moment it's just about gelling with my new coach my new manager things like that like i'm currently traveling up and down to belfast for training mm-hmm. which that's kind of just getting everything kind of into the flow and stuff like that so that's the main thing yeah and even like just touching on your training as well what does that look like exactly so how often are you in in the gym so at the moment i'm once a week up in belfast and then every day it'll be in the local box which my dad actually runs it's next door to us so i can just go in it's it's so much handier (laughs) so i meet my coach in belfast he gives me a training plan for the week so i'll do pad work boxing uh, bags the new thing at the moment is sprints <laughs> i hate sprints i hate any type of running <laughs> so it just does not fit me but yeah no we're at we're doing sprints at the moment which is on a curve runner which if you know what that oh, is yeah. it's basically a nightmare of a machine i actually have nightmares when i think about it <laughs> because it just i feel like i'm gonna fall all the time <laughs> yeah. so but yeah no we're it's it's all full on and I'll, yeah i'll see my head yeah six five days a week six days a week, uh, six uh-huh. days a week six and days. sunday's off <laughs> Well, yeah. No, yeah. rest day is like part of your training as well. Yeah. So. Oh, and a lot of ice baths. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. But they do work. I actually oh, used yeah. to do ice baths as well. Um, so I play hockey. Oh, I And mean, cool. I played in high school as well. They, my coaches were quick to say, come yeah. on, guys, ice bath. Hated it. Yeah. But I see the value in you it. You know, we do one every morning now. So as soon as we oh. wake up, we get in, we go out and do the ice bath. So actually, it's not as fancy as an ice bath. It's actually just a barrel. <laughs> a barrel out the back of my house and um, myself and Shane will get into it every morning we'll do whatever time we want and this morning it was horrible it was so cold yeah I can imagine. like I think the barrel I think it was I think five or six degrees and then obviously the wind was coming as well and it was just it was so horrible <laughs> but he was like stop being a drama queen just do it <laughs> so I, I just don't know <laughs> yeah but that's all part and parcel of yeah, yeah the training as well and you have five undefeated fights if i'm not mistaken or how many five yeah yeah, yeah. again <laughs> amazing <laughs> so you. impressive and yeah looks like it's going to be there's going to be six soon as well yeah, so. hopefully no thank <laughs> yeah i'm yeah. excited <laughs> yeah no that's really exciting so what would you say as well is like do you have like any i don't want to say just one but like what would you say is your your main let's put it that way like your main goal at the mo- at the moment Right now, this moment is, I know this sounds so cliche, but to be happy. Mm. If I feel like something is being negative around me or anything like that, I will step away because I know where it can bring me. So Mm. my main goal at the moment is be happy, be successful, basically, as bad as that sounds. It's it's not all about success, but it's just, I want to do things for me. And that's, Mm. I know it sounds so selfish, but it's for me. Mm. And if I don't feel like someone's kind of staying inside that bubble for that I need then I will step away from them and kind of just be the be positive that's mm. the, yeah it's not selfish at all <laughs> because I mean <laughs> you need to preserve your mental health and yeah. your physical health it, it's all connected so yeah, yeah well, I, I learned the hard way basically mm. if, and I need I know that I need to have good people around me good vibes as they say and that's all I, I do so. yeah and that reflects then as well in not just your life, but also your career as an yeah. athlete as well. Yeah. yeah. So we'll move on to the last photo. Mm. I absolutely love this photo. What is the story behind this one? <laughs> so my niece will actually kill me if she sees this. <laughs> so this is my niece, Eva. Uh, she was only, oh God, I think she was only like three in that photo. She is, oh God, she'll kill me. I forgot her age. <laughs> my sister will go mad. <laughs> she is 10 now. Okay. Um, this is me putting her boxing wraps on her. 
because she wanted a box just like her auntie Caitlin. Aww. She is not boxing at the moment. <laughs> she loves gymnastics, <laughs> but that's great. But you know, I just love the photo. Just her little face. She just looks so happy in it. Mm. Just, I think it's cute, and that's kind of the main thing. I want to do it for those little girls out there that don't have someone to look up to. Mm. Like I want to say, if you're going through a bad time, it's okay. Like it's it's normal. Like mm. you will still achieve whatever you want to. That if there's always a tunnel, will be dark. There'll always be a light at the end of it. Mm. So it's going to be okay. And that's kind of what the photo kind of represents. Mm. If you don't want to box, you don't have to box. If you don't want to do ballet or whatever it is, you don't have to if you don't want to. Mm. And that's the main thing that yeah. I really want to show kids out there Mm, that's amazing as well and if if you think of it so you mentioned like your dad katie taylor like Mm. growing up like you had role models in your life and how do you feel knowing that you are also potentially a role model for other young athletes out there i was only talking about this earlier with shane and it's actually crazy to think of like last year a girl that's in the boxing club abby she dressed up as me for halloween oh (laughs) And it was crazy. Like I was like, oh my god, that, that's me. She's dressing up as like I used to dress up as Katie Taylor when I was younger. <laughs> and like she came in and she had like her mom the makeup of a black guy. And everyone was like, oh, you're not dressed up as Caitlyn. She doesn't get black guys. <laughs> and it was just it was so funny. She, she went off and rubbed the black guy off. And she was like, but that's okay. I'm Caitlyn feeling like I'm gonna be the world champion. And she like she had a little belt and everything out of cardboard. And I was like, oh my god, that's just so cute. And but it's crazy. Like even mm. down in the local boxing club in St Bridget's the kids will come up to me and they're like, oh, you're the girl on the poster, aren't you? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, will you give me a shout out on your Instagram or stuff like that? And I was like, oh, that is so cute though. Yeah. It's really nice to see. Mm. And also like you mentioned, like when we just started the interview as well, that there weren't many girls boxing when you were growing up. Yeah. Have you seen a big shift now that you're older? Massively, yeah. Mm. When I started off at five or six years old, I think there was two girls in the boxing club. Um, one I really looked up to her name was actually Danielle and her dad was a coach at the time and I, I wanted to be her because like she wasn't really big or anything like that I was just like oh she's cool she boxes let's just be like her uh, which is quite cool but now like looking in the local club there's more girls than there's boys Wow. and like, if you look on the wall like all the Irish titles I think there's only over I think 50 of them I think there's only two or three that are actually boys wow. so <laughs> like I'm quite lucky to be in a club that my dad represents oh, female boxing. Mm. I think I proved that to him as well along the years. Yeah. I was like, look, we can do it just because we're females doesn't really make a difference. Mm. We are able to achieve it just as well or even better than some of the boys. Yeah. <laughs> Which is great. <laughs> no, that's amazing. Yeah. And you've sort of touched on it already, but maybe just in closing as well, um, why would you encourage other young girls to, to get involved in sport? I think sport is actually very important. It doesn't matter what sport it is. But just like, especially boxing. So boxing teaches you so much. It teaches you self-defense. But it's good for your head. It's good for your physic- like physical body, stuff like that. But just to kind of surround yourself with other people that have a similar goal to you, it makes you feel, I wouldn't say normal. Like, no one wants to be normal, really. <laughs> like, normal is boring. But it just... It makes you feel like, yeah, I can achieve it. And other people are like, yeah, you can achieve it, but so can I. And it's just, it's really good. And I'd recommend any girl or any boy, anyone at all, really, give boxing a go. If you go down to your local club for one session, give it a go. I guarantee you will love it. Not only can you punch someone in the face and not get in trouble, <laughs> oh God, <laughs> but you're getting these endorphins out that it's just, it hits different. And like, it's a different type of fitness altogether as well. Like, People run around in the pitch, like we have the local soccer clubs and everything that come to us for a different type of training session. And it's just, I don't know, boxing just, it just really hits different with you. Mm. Like, go punch a bag for 10 minutes and if you hated someone or if someone really annoyed you throughout that day, picture their face and I guarantee you're going to love them by the end of it. Because <laughs> <laughs> you get everything out on that yeah. bag. <laughs> so, okay. But yeah, I'd recommend anyone to go try boxing, but especially girls. Mm, okay. Thank you so much, Caitlin, for sharing your story with us. Thank I don't you. know if there's anything else you'd like to add. I just want to give a big shout out to a sponsor, if that's okay. Yeah. I want to give a shout out to Anna from Mellow. If anyone is in Kildare Town, there is a really good cafe and do the best pancakes ever. So <laughs> I'd recommend you all go to Kildare for pancakes in Mellow Cafe and Bistro. Okay. So, awesome. Cool. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed that episode and that you'll join us for the next one. Be sure to click that like and subscribe button and don't forget to follow hersport.ie across social platforms for all the latest women in sport content. Mm-hmm.